And we're back, our first show of 2011. We're going to stay with our angel theme. And our next two angels um, are on our couch now. And guys, you just had me humbled to be in your presence. I want to thank you so much for what you do for the community. And thank we're you. with J.J. Quinn and Mr. Gene Ferre. And welcome, guys. And uh, the, the things that you've done, and especially the trip you took last week, was just magnificent. We'll, we'll get into that and, and what it means to a family right here in town. But uh, first of all, let, let's talk about flying. Okay. Um, what's your background, JJ? How'd you get started in flying to get yeah. you to this point? Uh, 60 years ago here in Culpeper, I solo. 60 years ago? Yes. Where well, you were like eight? When you were five, you yeah. <laughs> or 16. Uh, and 60 years ago, I fl soloed a flight in the Piper Cub out of a grass strip in Virginia, uh, Culpeper, just out, uh, across from Holiday Inn on Madison Road. Now, did anybody know you were doing this? Or My mom and dad <laughs> did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I came back on cloud nine. And I found that that's what I wanted to do right then. Then I went to college. Then I went in the Navy and flew in the Navy for six years. And then I was fortunate enough to come out of the Navy and get a job with the airlines. And what kind of planes did you fly in the Navy? Uh, P-2Vs, patrol plane, okay. uh, T-28s, S-2Fs. All these are Navy terms you probably don't no, know. I was, I was acting yeah. interested. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the P-2V was an older uh, ASW, anti-submarine uh, warfare. And we would fly low over the water. It was fun. We could go below a sailboat and wave up. He would wave up at us. Or so, down at us. <laughs> sounds like a ton of fun. It was. It was legal, too. Yeah, okay. So we did that. I did that for four years, and I got out of the Navy and um, got on with Capital Airlines, and I flew DC-3s for six months. Uh, Capital Airlines? Yes, it goes back a ways, 1960. Okay. Are they somebody else now, or did they just United dissolve? Airlines. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I went back in the Navy, instructed two years on uh, T-28s in the Navy, and then I got uh, recalled with United at the time. They had bought Capital. And then I was fortunate enough to fly everything from... Uh, DC-6 to the 747. I retired on the 747. Wow. How long did you fly for 35 them for? years wow. with United. Wow. And How about you, Gene? Have you gotten your solo license yet? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, very similar to JJ. Uh, I've, been wanting to, uh, I've been wanting to fly all my life, but man, I, we were really poor coming out the swamps of Louisiana, as we were just talking about. And, uh, but, the only uh, thing flying there was mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> Big ones too. <laughs> I, I joined the Louisiana Guard when I was uh, 17. It was the earliest time you could get in. And uh, uh, I knew that at that point that, it was, that I really wanted to do this. But uh, obviously you, you couldn't afford to go through it the civilian route. Yeah. So uh, I joined the Air National Guard after I graduated at LSNU in Baton Rouge. And uh, flew fighters there. And then came to Miami, Florida and flew in combat rescue, seaplanes and helicopters. So I went from fighters to seaplanes to helicopters. And at the same time, concurrent, uh, I joined National Airlines and I flew their Electras and then Pan Am bought them. Pan Am went out of business and I finished my career with Delta on the 7576 across the ocean. Was well, so, this discussion about the old airlines is like, <laughs> where are they now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't hear everybody mention uh, Continental throughout all that stuff. So right. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't get a piece in there. Well, yeah. fabulous. Okay, well, JJ, now you have the plane yes, that sir. was used. Now, what yeah. kind of aircraft is that? It's a uh, Cessna 210. It holds six people. It's a single engine, and it does about 200 miles an hour. So we take missions uh, probably from Atlanta up as far as Boston. And... Uh, with the uh, Angel Flights, uh, I've been with them about 16 years, and I probably have done about 200 missions with them that time. I do about 20 a year. Why? And uh, it's very, very gratifying. People are so appreciative of what you do. We can get them from point to point quicker than they can from in an airline. We had one lady that was going from uh, Clarksburg, West Virginia, to North Philadelphia. And uh, we had her in Philadelphia before she would even gotten to Pittsburgh to get on the airplane to fly for an hour to Philadelphia. So we had her there, and I think we even waited for her and took her back. Just so in case the folks don't know, what is an angel flight? An angel flight was started about uh, 30, 35 years ago, and um, we fly approximately uh, 1,280 missions a year nationwide, 300 uh, missions just in Virginia, uh, and it's uh, public uh, 
benefit to the public in dollars of about a million dollars a year and about uh, 170,000 just here in Virginia. When we say benefit, it's all completely free. We pay for the gas, we pay for the upkeep of the airplane, everything. So somebody comes to us for a flight, they get, sometimes it's through the doctor that they're working through in the hospital and they need to go back and forth and they say, well, here's a card for Angel Flight. They'll call Angel Flight and then they'll post it on a website of trips that are available and we'll just sign up for a trip. That's, that's how we communicate with each other. Well, well Gene, you said it's worth about a million dollars, but to that family it's got to be priceless. 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 Uh, and it's such a blessing for us to be able to do that. And we, we get all the blessing just observing yeah. that reunion when we got back from New York. Yeah, that's, that's just, it's it powerful. just sends chills up my spine Me to too. think about it. Well, tell us a little bit about the, the recent trip you took. It was for young Andrew Winland yeah. and his dad, Tony. Okay, let's, Give us a little let's start with Gene and <coughs> how they first met okay. here at uh, Ross. It's Rice Tires. Rice Tires. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I need an inspection of my car. Tony comes in, and I'm talking to Frankie about about um, the issues uh, with my car. And I, I hadn't seen Tony in quite a while. We go to the same church together. And um, Tony says, there's, some, there's a reason why I, I, we're together today, because are you still doing angel flights? I said, yes. He said, my son has, has got a rare form of cancer. The name is Andrew, and he's in Manhattan. And we'd like to get him home for Christmas if that's going to be possible. I said, "Let me, don't move. Let me call JJ. So while, while I was there, I called JJ. He says, I, we can do that. The airplane's got to come in for maintenance, but we can do that. I said, Tony, I'll stay in touch with you. I'll, I'll call you as soon as I get information mm -hmm. that I need. And to put all these pieces together was had to be supernatural from our Lord. And the reason why... First of all, Andrew in Sloan Kettering in Manhattan, his white blood cells count was zero. And that had to come up before they were going to release him. The airplane was in maintenance with major engine issues, and that had to be fixed. The weather had to be perfect. Little airplanes don't do well, JJ. Yeah. With uh, icing conditions. So you can't put a little airplane like ours, like his, excuse me, in. Oh, it was too, man. Yeah. In the clouds, when the, when the freezing level is on the ground, because ice will get on the airplane and that could ruin your whole day. So you don't de-ice it like other jets do? You well, can't. you don't start that. with okay. ice. Right. And you don't go in the clouds that produce okay. the ice on your airplane. Yeah. So those are, all these pieces had to go together. And then Anthony's, um, Anthony, um, Andrew. Andrew's uh, father, well, his white count, okay, well, had yeah. to be at least reasonable so they could release them because of infection issues. Mm -hmm. So all those pieces had to go together. And they all came together on what day? 22nd. The 22nd. The morning of the departure. And what, actually, what did you guys do? Well, actually, uh, the two mechanics at Culpeper Building Cabin stayed late that night of the 21st, knowing we had to go out the next day. Okay, this is something I didn't know about. Let's, okay. talk about, let's, let's give Bill and, <laughs> yeah. and Kevin a plug here. Yeah. What, what are their names? Bill and Kevin. What are their last names? Bill, uh, Kevin Woodside and, okay. and Bill uh, it's a, uh, McCoy. Bill McCoy. Okay. And they, they work at White the Hawk Aviation at the, at the Culpeper Airport. Very good. Okay. So they're were, they were a part of this puzzle? Yeah. Absolutely. And they've been working with me for years. Okay. So we knew we had this coming up. We knew that was the only day that we could do it because the weather was supposed to be bad the next day. They stayed an hour later to fix the airplane. They came in an hour early in the morning so we could test fly it. We did test fly it and they found a little leak. They fixed that and we were off and running. Now we actually have some footage that we're gonna show of okay. your return Good. flight here. Good. But uh, let's, let's just keep talking about it. So this is, this is the morning of the 23rd? Second. 22nd? Now, yeah. where, where did we go from? So we go uh, up to Teterboro, New Jersey to pick them up. Can I uh, put a little piece in here? Sure. Take off out of call prepper, talk to air traffic control at Potomac Approach, and we're westbound and over the mountain. It's clear and nice weather in our location, but uh, across the mountains, the mountains are holding back a major... Parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> yeah, the clouds are getting thicker and thicker, mm -hmm. and we are, we're going into them. And so we requested uh, a vector right through the air defense intercept zone, the a vector? ADIS. Air heading. traffic control will give, give you a heading, heading okay. and we oh, okay. requested okay. instead of going westbound okay. to go north so we could go straight there. And the airliners are, are pretty busy. It's like a beehive. 
at Dulles National and, and Baltimore, and these guys are working all the traffic, including us, but we call ourselves angel flight as we go. <laughs> And that, that part of the Red Sea, like, like, <laughs> like Moses, right? yeah. he gave yeah. us a heading right yeah. through the areas where other airplanes are not allowed to go. Because we had a squawk, we had an angel flight, we're authentic flight, and then off, off to uh, Teterboro, New Jersey we go. Fabulous. About how much air time does that take? An hour and 10 minutes. Okay. So you land in Teterboro, Andrew's already there? Yep. Now, was his, da his dad was there with him? Yes, he was there with him. So He's, he'd been up. spending several nights up in Stone Kettering with him. Okay. On the ready. If the flood count is up, we can go. Okay. So we met him there, and uh, he was very glad to see us. And uh, we pulled in besides these big airplanes, corporate airplanes, what we call G5s, G4s, multi-million dollar airplane. Here was our little airplane <laughs> right between them. We're strutting in there. We're on an angel Pedaling flight. Pedaling as fast as you could. Right? Well, yeah, <laughs> but they all know we're on angel flight. So we get a discount on gasoline. What can we do for you? Thank you for what you do. And we get that all over the East Coast. That's magnificent. Yeah. Did an ambulance meet you? No, there? he was ambulatory. He could walk. Oh, great. We can't any take, can't take anybody that is not ambulatory. They have to be able to get on and get out. That's one of the rules. And one of the rules with air uh, angel flight is we have to have an aircraft that is IFR qualified, instrument rated qualified, and the pilot has to be instrument rated qualified. So Gene and I fit into this category very well, being ex airline pilots. It's just like sitting in a rocking chair, doing the old thing, right? What is it, 55 years of experience just in the military? <laughs> oh, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Not the military. So you said it's IFR? Instrument flight rules. I, I heard that stood for I follow roads. No, we is don't do that, that anymore. That? <laughs> oh, were you in the Navy? <laughs> I was in the Navy. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Marines? This is Pastor Mallory C. Monroe and Denise Monroe from New Fellowship Christian Center on Route 15 north of Owens, Virginia. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 reads, For we walk by faith and not by sight. The most important thing after salvation is learning what God's Word says about you and how to walk in this life. Jesus did it for you. Come on in and let's see what God can do. started this business to be the local restaurant and the local guys and be the alternative to the casual dining chains. We knew the place was going to look good, we just didn't realize it was going to look this good. We run a breakfast buffet from 6 to 10.30. Every day with the exception of Saturday we do a lunch buffet that starts at 11. Sundays we actually do a brunch that runs from 12 to 3. This, uh, probably the thing that we're the most famous for is the prime rib. Uh, some of the out-of-town guests, you know, they say it's some of the best that they've ever had. Somebody from the Chesapeake Bay part of Maryland, we're talking about how to get our crab cakes up. Your people are kind of the most important thing. The server that connects with that guest, they'll remember that. At the Stable, they smoke all their meats on site, and their barbecue is out of this world. The Stable has great specialty dishes and even has a children's menu. The Stable is open for lunch and dinner every day of the week, and with its relaxed atmosphere, it's a great place to get together with friends to watch the game or listen to live music. The Stable is located in Culpeper's historic downtown district at 129 East Culpeper Street. For more information or to order takeout, please call 540-727-2007. Randy's Flowers delivers when a star is born. Appreciation and thanks. Expressions of sympathy. What can Randy's Flowers deliver for you? Automotive Options, your one-stop shop for automotive detailing, tires, and accessories. We offer a complete line of auto detailing, from a simple wash and vac to bumper-to-bumper -bumper detailing. 
custom wheels up to 26 inches, as well as many different types of tires for cars and trucks. Most available next day. Professional window tinting with Lamar, as well as accessories for your car or truck. We are located at 109 Germana Highway in Culpeper near the intersection of Route 3 and 15. Stop by or give us a call at 540-727-AUTO. So now we get, you got him and his dad. Him and yeah. his dad. And it's just you two, or was anybody else on no, the plane? No, no, just for us. And yeah. so then you came on, came on came back, back here. Call Pepper, and with an angel flight, what's called a call sign. And if we want to get a vector, which means a heading to avoid going around mm -hmm. these curves, whatever you want, angel flight, you got. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just skirted the weather on the way back as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now we were getting storms around that time. You must have just missed it. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It was a perfect day between the storms. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's amazing the yeah. timing. Divine intervention. Yeah, we the angels. I tell you, yeah, that. there you go. <laughs> angels all over the place. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. believe that. Yeah, yeah. I believe the Lord was in it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Andrew got to be home with the family for yeah. for uh, for Christmas. I'm sure that was great tonic for everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where is he now? What's his status now? Just one other thing about. I know the, you have permission to talk. About it. Just one. Other, <laughs> no, just one other thing about the flight is that when when we. We crossed the Delaware, almost where Washington crossed it, going into Pennsylvania. And Andrew's, saying, Andrew's looking out the window, and he's really, he's, he's having such a good time. And he said, Dad, Dad, there's a golf course. Now, he's 12, and he loves to play golf. And you, Dad, why don't you just count them? So as we making our descent into Culpeper, and we're about 10 minutes out, he said, Dad, you know how many golf course I counted? I counted 12 of them. And I said, Andrew, that was on the right side. You should have seen the ones on the left. Yeah. So we had such a good time. And God willing, he'll get to play on all of those yeah. golf courses. Yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So what's the next step for him? Is he still in town or has he had to go uh, back to I think he's going to NIH, Institute of Health up in Bethesda for a while okay. for some tests. Okay. And then um, I check with uh, Tony, his dad and mom. He may be going back to Sloan Kettering which we'll be happy to take him back up there. Yeah. Put him on that schedule. What, what they're doing up there is that he has uh, a cancer that's so rare that only 50 people in this country have, have ever had it. And they're taking some blood and some cells and they're mixing them to see if they can give uh, um, Don't, uh, Andy. <laughs> Andy. Andrew yes. a vaccine that will disable the cancer cells or, or make them uh, not. Yeah. I think the new research is, is they've found a way to um, get the cancer cells solitary away from your other regular cells so you mm -hmm. could destroy right. them. I think that just, yeah. didn't that just come out this week? I don't know. There's a lot of know. new yeah. technology. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. really cool stuff. But yeah. the blessing would be he does not have to go back up into Manhattan yeah. because if he goes back, they're talking about surgery and he's got, it's spread. It's all mm -hmm. over his body. So. Yeah. Um, boy, if they can stop this growth, it would be such a blessing. Well, from what I've heard about him, he's he's going to come out of it just fine. Yes, he's, he's a strong and the big thing guy. we can tell you and your audience <laughs> yeah. is ask the Lord to bless him and pray for him. Yes, yeah. please. Well, bes besides the prayers that we know everybody will give and the efforts that you guys have made, there's a, there's another function going on. It's a it's an ongoing fundraising effort to, to help the family out because Good. obviously these things are not cheap. Mm -hmm. And um, through SunTrust Bank at the Meadowbrook branch here in Culpeper, they have the Andrew Winland Fund. Right. How, does, how does that work? How do people make contributions to that? I guess just call that bank and uh, Contact they, the bank? they can do it, yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to get that number and, and put it up on That's the screen. That's great. And you can just make a contribution in, in Andrew's name. Good. Andrew Good. Winland. Okay. That's, Good. that's marvelous. Um, you know, another component of that is our, our very good friends at uh, the Culpeper Times. Um, we're multi-dimensional here, media magnates. <laughs> the Culpeper Times did a, a very nice story on Andrew and uh, and his flight. And uh, there's information in there, too, how folks can, can pull together and help him out and help out his family as they go through this battle. But uh, you guys were certainly uh, uh, right on the front lines. Oh, it was a pleasure. That, and, it was uh, a pleasure. It's, uh, yeah. it's a tremendous thing that you do. Um, we don't want to trivialize, trivialize that, but there's other things you do too. Yes. A, yeah. a, above and beyond sick children, <laughs> uh, you do things for veterans and wounded for, warriors. Wounded warriors. And for puppies. And puppies. Oh, yes. Give uh, us a quick, quick well, synopsis. Well, the puppies, of uh, we rescue puppies from uh, high, kill, high kill pounds. Uh, they're, they're abandoned dogs, puppies, and everything else. Uh, we just recently took a mother with four little two-week-old puppies from uh, 
uh, Roanoke up to uh, Newburgh, New, Ham uh, Newburgh, New York. And uh, we do that about, we've taken about 25 or 30 puppies from the south up to the north. Uh, the most interesting one we did was uh, three little chihuahuas, I have a photograph here, were in uh, Longmont, Texas. Somebody drove them from Longmont to Jackson, Mississippi. Somebody picked them up in Jackson, Mississippi and took them up to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, we picked them up and flew them to Roanoke, where was their parent, uh, foster care, I don't want to call them parent, foster care, who was going to have them adopted the next day. So we saved about four puppies then. How do people call you on that? Does the pound call you? Does the, uh, a good no, citizen who knows they're going to be distressed? Uh, the people all up and down the East Coast will call me and say, we've got some puppies. I'm supposed to take a puppy flight next week, which my grandkids are really happy about, because I'll pick up four puppies in uh, Alabama, take them to my home here in Culpeper, overnight them, let my grandkids see them and play with them, mm -hmm. and then take them up to <laughs> Oh, that's cruel. Yeah. <laughs> so if somebody wants to adopt a puppy or a dog, yes. could they call you? Oh, you got absolutely. the inside track. Absolutely. Okay, Pilot so the numbers you're going to give us at the end, yes. yeah. folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then we do uh, Wounded Warriors. That's a great organization. Uh -huh. uh, we take uh, people that, uh, like a wife and a baby, want to go see their son, or their husband, mm -hmm. rather, but down in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I took them. I have a photograph of that here, too. They just wanted to visit him. Then we picked up uh, a man and his wife. He was uh, wounded in the IED in uh, Iraq, I think. Uh, and he was first to leave in Atlanta, just outside of Atlanta. And the American Legion was there with 200 people and flags greeting him down there. I didn't take that trip. I brought him back. You have those pictures, too? Uh, I do not, but there's on the website. I'll show you where that is. Great, yeah. great. But um, it's just so rewarding. There's so much good things going on in this country that you don't even hear about. It. This is just one of them. Sounds like you're involved in a lot of those good things. Well, yeah, I do a lot of the little thing called mm. repairing braille machines. R repairing what? Braille machines. For braille, the oh. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do that when I was flying the airline. I, I did that all over the country. And, uh, is there you, you're just... Making me more and more humble as you go along here. No. I'm starting to see a halo. No, <laughs> no I got involved well, in that. Gene, with, not so much. Yeah, well, he's, he's okay. <laughs> he sings a lot. But uh, I got involved in that when I was uh, uh, temporary duty in Cleveland. I had a lot of time on my hands. I said, I wonder what I could do for other people. And I thought, what would the worst thing that I would like to have would be blindness. So I called the local people. They said, well, we've got some uh, braille machines here. Are you mechanical? I said, kind of. So I started there, and then I got to go all over the country in Chicago, San Diego, New York. I would go to these various, what's called lighthouses, and uh, fix our bell machines. It, I'd fix about uh, 200 a year. Wow. Did you ever think starting flying with a military career in mind would bring you to this point 60 years later? No, I did not. But I knew I wanted to fly, and I wanted to travel. So I went in the Navy to fly the biggest airplane they could so I could get off the airline. Wow. But God's been very, very good to me. Amen. Yeah.